About a year ago, I started learning Unreal Engine and it has been a really, really fascinating journey. I wanted to understand how it worked because of the way that it integrated into so many modern productions and so many things I was seeing and it was Unreal this and Unreal that. And I just thought, I need to understand this because well, better than devil you know, right? However, when you download it, which is a free piece of software, by the way, you can just download it today and start creating. When you first open it up, it is extremely overwhelming. But as you start to kind of pick it apart a little bit, you start to sort of recognize concepts and ideas that if you're familiar with 3D workflows and things like that, you go, okay, I sort of understand what it's trying to do here. You kind of do this, you try this, you tweak this, you crash, you go again, you crash again, you lose all your work. The other thing that I found really, really intuitive with Unreal has been how the cameras and the lighting are so close to real life that I've been able to take ideas and techniques that I use in real life and just simply apply them into Unreal, which I think is amazing. And whilst you can't necessarily exactly copy things that you do, you actually find that these aren't really so much limitations as to more, once you understand how the systems work, you can change everything and make it work to your advantage. Light sources don't necessarily have to have an actual source of light. They can just create light without having a light that exists. Now, if you can imagine lighting cars where you don't have to worry about trying to flag off a huge light to still light a car, mwah, that's a dream. Now, if you've got any interest in Unreal Filmmaking, you have almost certainly come across one of Clinton Jones's unbelievable epic montages. A hundred different shots from a hundred different artists. And somewhere in the back of my mind, I have always wanted to be able to get to a point where maybe I could enter one of these one day. And then, this happened. It is time for another 3D Community Challenge. I am proud to announce Endless Engines, our first ever 3D vehicle challenge. So starting today, starting right now, I challenge you to buckle up and create the coolest sports car, the coolest truck, the coolest tractor trailer, bike, boat, biplane, or whatever gets you excited and populate this template scene with your unique creation so we can create the coolest convoy of 3D vehicles the internet has ever dreamed of. I'm gonna give this a go. Okay, so I'm gonna run you through my idea. I have this kind of vision of a very Luc Besson, Fifth Element style space car chase. You know, you remember the taxis, Bruce Willis, that sort of thing, such a great film. So if I can kind of capture that sort of wonderful, huge world with the cars and the traffic floating around, that's kind of what I've got in mind. Okay, so for the car itself, I think there is only one car for me, Honda NSX. Because, you know, I have one. So as part of the challenge, you'll be given a template for every major piece of software, and I'm obviously picking the Unreal one, and here is the animation. The car comes in from the left, sits in the middle of the frame, and then exits out to the right. So for the next evening, it was a case of bring in the car model and start to kind of build it into the way I wanted. You know, start by applying some basic materials, starting with red, which I changed later, starting to copy the animation, a little bit of a dip, with a little bit of blocking in mind, a little bit of particle work, which, you know, really is not my forte. And then it was a really case of kit bashing some stuff onto the car to sort of give it that futuristic vibe that feels like it's been a bit home brewed, which kind of works really well with the aesthetic because my modeling skills are essentially none. I found these water barrels that I thought would make really cool wheels in a sci-fi pack as well. And once you've animated them with a bit of an idea that there's going to be anti-gravity boots beneath it, and it all starts to really come alive. And there you go. That was the first part of the animation. Okay, so a few hours later and we now have this. We have a car, I have a flappy bonnet, which is kind of coming off. We've got some traffic that goes around and I'll just show you what those are. I built some very rudimentary, terrible looking lorries. Terrible looking lorry here. Um, and here is our Honda doing some cool flips and you can kind of see it as it follows its way around the... <laughs> it's so cool, I love, I love this stuff. Uh, I built another AMG here. It's got some cool space parts on it. Again, like put some wheels on it. And then over here, we've got an Integrale. Again, it's kind of black traffic. It's not very well lit here. But if I go to Path Tracer, you can kind of see what's up here. But there we go, the animation is looking cool. So now it's time to build some world. And a few clicks later, and here we are. This is the city where the Honda will travel through. It's all a bit mad at the moment, but it's designed for a journey. I've been able to put in little details that the car picks up on its way through. You know, we've got things like this archway here that we'll be able to fly through and create a bit of dynamicism to the shot. But when you hit path tracing and turn off all the ugliness and we see the light, you can kind of see it all starting to come to life.
Now this is where the Honda starts its journey on the animation and as we send it flying off you can kind of see it go past a few floating objects but that's the thing with filmmaking it doesn't really matter how anything works as long as it looks good in camera and all it has to do is work in camera and I built all of these with the camera shot exactly in mind so if you take that pathway and I now play that from the camera's point of view you kind of see it all start to come together. We are missing some layering though, so I've added in some fog. How about that? Nice. And that kind of just starts to layer up the world a little bit. And again, it looks a little bit jank here, but it's all about when you hit that path tracing button and all of a sudden the world comes alive. And obviously you've got to have a driver. So we've got this robot guy here who is just kind of driving stuff. He's a very, very simple model who sits in the car. He looks around, has a nice time, but just a little bit of personality goes a long, long way. You know, looks, he looks around, he's got an eye that works. All that kind of stuff's awesome. I feel like we need something else. I think we need like a chase car or something to kind of just bring it, bring it to life. I've got the perfect idea. <laughs> I've got one of these too. Now one thing I did want to try, I was I want to try this. I want to see if I can like make them tow each other so it's kind of like I don't know whether it's like a chase that's going wrong or whether they're trying to tow each other or one of them's broken down a little bit and I think that kind of looks really fun that they're kind of like blocking traffic but at the same time like I don't really understand what the story I think I'm just putting in a cable for the sake of just like having a cool cable sim in there maybe it's something I don't know and this is it the final final render and I am super 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 happy this is in lumen at the moment which means this is not the path trace version which I'm going to set to render out whilst I'm away and yeah it's all in there we've got a robot we've got our traffic we've got our world we've got our Corolla I took the cable out in the end because I just didn't think it was like making any sense I don't think it's going to work anyway uh, but yeah everything all the little details are all there you know if I exit out here we've got the car's got the, the systems on it, we've got a little robot in there looking cool, we've got fog in the world all layered up. And most importantly, we're like, when that's all put together, I go back into the camera and I hit the path tracer button. Obviously we're heavy on volumetrics here as well, so everything slows down quite a lot, but yeah, it's all there and I'm really, really happy with it. The bonnet flies up properly now and everything and there's personality I hope in the shots and yeah I, I think it's it's been an amazing bit of fun and with that there is nothing left to do except hit render and hope for the best. Yo what is up? What is up? What's up what's everybody? Up? Hey. Yo, what's up Ren? Peter Allen? Yo. Dude I'm excited to see these top overloaded. 100 renders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a lot. This is going to be an exciting day. Good stuff, Frederick. Alistair's next. Little Blade Runner for ya. Yo. Okay. Yo, the All camera right. angle is like more zoomed in here. Square. Square head, yeah. I love, I, Look I at that a bit. coffee table book of just <laughs> sci-fi vehicles on their side. The flips. There's the barrel roll. That would Wait, be awesome. Am I looking? What is the motion blur? Am, am I saying stepping in the motion blur there, like the little lines? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Little spooks. I love the colors on this one. Though. It's like the green and yeah. yellow, orange. It's just ah, can't get enough. I think that's an old Corvette, but I'm not sure. I mean, who's to say? It's a flying car, so whatever. But <laughs> and all the steam in the background makes the city feel so alive. Yeah. I think it's yeah, a Ferrari. Yeah, the, the city is intense. Yeah, the the steam, the color, the render quality, the lighting on this one. Mm. Yeah, the reflection off the side of the vehicle, and you can see all of the like the streaks, the gross little streaks. Yeah. The the wheels they like move in three dimensions, and yeah. like I guess it's like they're not thrusters, but they're doing something. They're anti gravity nodes. They're like balancing or something. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Good stuff, Alistair. Who's next? I am 
absolutely gobsmacked. I do not <laughs> believe that that happened, but I'm so grateful and it was awesome and such a cool learning experience and it was really good to like spend those days having like a goal and a project and something to actually make and build something towards. If anything that's obviously inspired me to want to just make more stuff for myself and you know obviously these challenges give you a really good direction to make something for so I'm really really uh, yeah I'm just really really surprised considering the level of the artists and the work that they pushed out. Um, so the montage should be due out any day now and uh, hopefully I'm going to get this video done in time. Um, please subscribe to Clint's channel Punisher, it's amazing, there is some of the most phenomenal stuff that goes out on there. Also shout out to all my friends who have helped me with other bits and pieces and you know all you guys know who you are. And hopefully I'll make another YouTube video in maybe another five years. Thanks very much.